What's going on guys? In this episode, how healthy is Indian food? Not very much. I'll see you next time. Come back, I'm just kidding guys. Look, I admit, there's nothing better than having a great curry on a weekend evening with your best friends or family. The issue is when you do this on a regular basis, there are lots of health benefits when it comes to Indian foods. Indian foods certainly do contain really healthy ingredients like pepper and turmeric. Now I think we all know the issue isn't the spice. The issue is the carbohydrates and fat content of that food and how you can go overboard with your calorific intake on a regular basis if you're consuming Indian food regularly. So my first point is regarding fats. Now there are definitely healthy fats, there are bad fats, and then there are Indian fats. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's not that bad, or is it? Now I don't know which Indian dish you consume, but most of the dishes that I've had in my life don't contain healthy fats. Healthy fats like coconut fat and extra virgin olive oil or avocados, these fats are almost completely absent from Indian dishes. In Western cuisine, we consume a lot of omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. We try to increase our intake of healthy fats like healthy oily fishes. So my first recommendation is of course to make sure that the fats you're eating are healthy fats. Just take one of my favorite dishes, for example. It's called malai kofta. Now, malai kofta is a dish that has paneer, fat. That paneer is deep fried in oil, fat. Guess what makes the gravy of a malai kofta? Cream, fat. And as great as this tastes, I mean, even talking about this makes my mouth water. If you're consuming this on a regular basis, the health effects are gonna be insane. It's really easy in an Indian cuisine to get carried away with the fats that you consume. So it's almost impossible to avoid eating fats if you're on a regular Indian diet. What I would really strongly suggest is that you start making your own curries. I made a three minute video on how to make a chicken curry. So if you're interested, make sure you watch that. I'm gonna leave the link right under the like button. My second point is gonna be regarding the issues of diabetes and obesity in India. Now, according to a recent report, around 30 million people have been diagnosed with diabetes in India. Think about that. The population of Australia is just 25 million. Now, these are just the people that have been diagnosed. There are probably lots of people who haven't been diagnosed. And the issue is the lack of education around what causes diabetes. Obesity is another rising epidemic in India. I just checked the Wikipedia page on obesity in India and I realized around 50% of the people that live in New Delhi are obese. There's a massive rising middle-class population in India that's coming out of poverty and that's a great thing. A lot of people are coming out of poverty and going straight into obesity and that is not good. I don't know which is worse, malnutrition or obesity. You can find both in India. But one thing is clear, something needs to be done regarding obesity and education is probably where it should start. A third point that I wanted to highlight is lifestyle and calorific intake. Now counting calories is almost absent from an Indian lifestyle. Going to the gym, at least until about a decade ago, was something that was not really heard of that commonly. If you go to India today, you will see gyms popping up all over the place. The young population now tends to spend a lot of time behind health and fitness. You can see the rise of health and fitness products, the rise of protein powders, and the rise of health conscious people, and even YouTube channels advising on health. Now, I believe India has the largest number of vegetarians in the world. It's possible to be vegetarian and healthy. The thing is, when you are a vegetarian, you need to make sure you're getting the right omega fatty acids, you're eating the right amount of protein that you need to include in your diet, you're getting enough vitamin D and other micronutrients. So a few quick tips on how to consume Indian food regularly, but still be healthy, is to make sure you're looking at your calorific intake, you're looking at what sort of fats you're eating, what sort of carbohydrates you're eating, what sort of fiber intake you have, are you getting the right micronutrients? Do you have enough vitamins in your body to sustain a healthy body? Are you drinking enough water? Do you walk enough? Now granted, even I am guilty of sitting down too much because our work is mostly involved on a computer these days. I always have a laptop with me and that's fine. Make sure you're doing the best you can while you enjoy that next Malai Kofta. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you find these tips useful. If you wanna watch videos like these in the future, then hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and let me know in the comments section what type of video you'd like me to make next time. I'll see you next time.